Are we live? Right now. We are officially public. What's up, everybody? Are you sure? <laughs> I don't see it. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds, but oh. refresh and should be can up. I, can I edit while we're live? Uh, I've never done it, but might as well give it a try. <laughs> Why does it say follow Esco at the very top? <laughs> <laughs> That's Delete! Just, it keeps the previous settings that I had it in before. Oh, and it has your Patreon. <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> Actually, okay, I'll leave all of that stuff. Just keep it underneath the section. Yeah, that just Why says Esco's info. Story on there? Because, see, it just keeps a lot of the previous things. All the previous things I copy and pasted the last time I did your live, it keeps it all there. Forty-nine. But you can change okay. it. However. Eskel helped me with this setup. Oh yeah, we're filming in I'm my sorry, studio. We are, yeah, we're in his studio, and I'm sorry we are late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at the microphone, but the camera's all the way up there. <laughs> can you guys hear us good? Hello. Oh yeah, last time I had some mic issues, but everything should be good this time. Hopefully. It was Let really cool to see. Sorry, we'll talk about. Uh, cold the cup of coffee stuff in a second but i thought it was really cool to see on instagram how many of you guys are from all these different countries in one country that i've never yeah. heard of and i hope you're here actually i'm i'm following all of the people that i was like literally talking to a lot of them like whoa it's weird and it's so cool i'm still in shock <laughs> hi emily hi mary well let's go on live chat hi caitlin hi susan hi taylor hi diana hi ivy do we have two Caitlins? Yeah, two Caitlins here. Amber's here. Kelsey. Hi, Russ. Hi, Trista. Hi, Emily. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Crystal. Selena. Naomi. Susan. Jay Snow. Patricia. Pupfish. Wow. Hi from Colorado, Janelle. Colorado? Heck yeah. Oh, Patricia's from Brazil. Yeah, see, we didn't get anyone saying on Instagram from Brazil. But so the reason on Instagram I did the poll of who who's from where, uh, and I did those main four because those main four are like Australia, UK, uh, Canada, all of them. I see comments multiple times coming from those countries. So it was shocking to see the next one. So when I had that questionnaire of who else, like if I didn't list your country, let me know what country you're from. The most comments were from Germany. So I decided, because there's probably no one from Germany on here tonight. Well, it's not. It's really night-night over there. <laughs> That's why. So um, I've decided next Sunday for number 50, we're going to try for noon Utah time. Please. Noon? So then yeah. it won't be too late for them. Do you ever them. go live that early? It's kind of early. Uh, one time, well, we both did a morning live yeah. at one point. But... One time at Allison's house, did a morning mm -hmm. live, and it was terrible <laughs> for me because I had to wake up that early. It's hard to get everything ready and all that in time, for Yeah, sure. but I think noon I could do that, and that would mean I think in Germany it would be like 8-ish. You know what else? Sorry, I just I feel kind of dumb that I posted that to my Instagram story, and I've been saying, okay, uh, you know, this time for Australia and this time for Canada, but then I was like, there's all these different time zones in America. There's no way that it's the same time zone in all of Canada. Because oh, I'm yeah. like, what time is it in Canada? And that's how I'm basing it off of. And so then, because <laughs> it tells me one time. So then I Googled, how many time zones are in Canada? And there's like three, and then there's like two in New Zealand. So then I, that's why I put <laughs> around this time is when it's going to be live in New Zealand, okay? Yeah, but it's going to be too hard. You can't tell, you can't let everyone know the exact it time. For everyone, but then but. I, then I made myself look stupid. <laughs> well, that's why even on, like, uh, TV, they're always like, oh, it's this time East Coast or something, you know? So, I don't know. Well, yeah, because in America, and that's what I did. I did East Coast, West Coast, you know, all in America. And then I was mm -hmm. like, is it this time in Australia? <laughs> but no, I changed it to be around this time in all the out-of-country ones. But usually okay. I would be like, it's this time in Australia, <laughs> this time in here. So I wonder nice. if some of the people were like, she's so good. They're all just waiting. <laughs> she is so, so good. Aww. Okay. Anyways, um, let's get into the cold cup of coffee for today. It is number 49. We, we know him. We've talked about him before. That is not a, a low battery sign, is it? That no, no, no. Okay. No, that means it's Ugh. charging. So I was it's like, just... I have way too much to say for that today. <laughs> <laughs> we have talked about this oh guy boy, before. If you guys remember, um, his son was on our live stream. It was actually the first time that we had someone come onto my live stream right after leaving and tell their story. And it was mm. Jacob. 
So oh. Jacob came on number 17, I believe. And he oh. told a lot about his story. And then we actually did an interview with him and he talked about his dad. His dad is number 49. Thank you, Denise. Money for the coffee fund. Ooh. We got, I'm actually drinking what? Our merch? juice today. Where's oh, yeah, Kyle's we shirt? Merch. Um, the culty you distracted tees. us, Denise. <laughs> but no, it's a good thing. Cool. We need to remind. I need to remind you guys and myself. We now have on my website the white and black culty crew shirts available for purchase. But are there white ones in bigger sizes? Yeah, like uh, this is small too ones. small. So <laughs> I also want to say, if you are petite, <laughs> then those sizes will work well for you. If you are not, do not, because I don't even fit these. I'm so mad about it, but I'm working on getting bigger sizes. These nice. ones fit yeah, way, these ones are really way nice. better. Really it's because they came from two different companies. So, mm -hmm. Anyway, this is what I'm drinking today. I don't know if anyone... It's not comfrey. It is, is it, not. <laughs> uh, the like, pure seed kind, or what kind is it? What's pure seed? I'm trying to think of that one in the area. What was that one called? The Aria? Yeah. He calls the Aria the area. Do you, is that oh. what it's called? <laughs> Am I, I saying it's it wrong? Aria. I don't know. I just um, don't think about it. But. There is a juice place there, yeah. And what was that called, though? It was like pure seed or something, wasn't it? Pure? I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure it's just... Just organic juice. Fresh. Mm. This stuff is like so fresh that it has to have an expiration date, and it's, it's the egg expires within the week oh. every single time. Can you get those at, like, just Whole Foods or where at? I'm sure they sell the Whole Foods, but this one is in Sugar House. Oh. Yeah. Nice. And so if you want to go, if you're on a budget, they have a section that everything's expiring the day of. <laughs> Sounds a little bit like <laughs> so what we used get to do really with order. Cheap. Half go. off. So if you're in Utah. Well, honestly, if you're in any place ever that has juiceries, I'm sure they do half off if it's expiring soon. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be drinking it in my healthy cup mug. This is just celery juice, though. I didn't realize that. I don't know if I would have bought it if I knew that. Ew, only <laughs> I paid six dollars. I think it was six dollars. Dang. Usually but, they mix it. I like it the best when they like mix it with apple juice or a more yummy flavored you juice. Try it? Sure. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> is it that gross? No, it's not bad. But okay, sorry. Before we get into the story, Denise, I don't know why this just made me think of all this other stuff I want to say before we start mm, talking about forty nine. Not bad. Thank you for the donation, though, Denise. This ginger shot is so gross, and I love ginger, so I want to see you take Ooh, a little bit. Of it I'll try it. And just yeah. see. You can use. Usually, like, I can handle shots really well. Shots, shots. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you meant? <laughs> no, I mean like <laughs> ginger shots, or what are the other ones? Um, there's vinegar turmeric. shots. I I've like taken turmeric, turmeric shots. shots. So this is different than most. Is this gonna make me want to throw up though? No. Is it like way I'll take strong? a little bit right now. I'll show you. Well, you go first, actually. Okay. How much, though? Am I just a little sip? Am I I would take less than how thing? much I drank. Look at There's lots of the stuff stuck at the bottom. Okay. Is that normal? What are you doing for that? It's fine. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Let's try it. Woo! Oh, my God. Isn't that the strongest ginger you've ever had? And it's fresh. That is, like, very concentrated or yeah, something. There's a lot in there. It really packed up. It's still burning, like the whole way down. How much did you take? I just take a teeny, teeny. Woo! Oh man, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> oh, somebody take it's like it. <laughs> liquid lava. But it makes your tummy down. feel so good that you keep drinking it. Oh. Okay. Man. Now that we got that out of the way. <sighs> man. Um, I don't know why. I... <clears throat> I just really wanted to see you drink that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Let's go back to number 49. Um, do you have any stories of 49? I forgot to ask you that before this. Not really, honestly. I feel like my time in the order, I rarely knew him. Like, had basically no encounters with him. I've learned more about him since I've left than when I was in the order. So. And from hearing from the family, he really taught the kids. This is coming from the kids. He taught them to only be friends with each other and to... To like not try to be friends with everyone else, like it's just almost to like he was to very themselves. not racist, but what's the antisocial or something? No, Anti but he didn't welcoming? like other families. I yeah, like, antisocial, almost. right? So like keeping to yourself. No, yeah. I don't know. So hmm. that's why I think we never really knew much of his kids or much of him. Well, I had some altercations with him. If you want to watch my story, I talk about mine, <laughs> but it's a long one, so it's There's linked down below if you want to watch details. that. Um, but so. We do have, we'll give you a little bit of background on him. He is the last son, 
wonder if he's the last kid actually of the seven brothers but he's the last of the seven brothers so if you watch the last live michelle hmm. names them all out wait so he's the youngest he's the, he's youngest. the little baby whoa that makes a lot of sense actually though yeah Dang. and in the hmm. order he was called so so the oldest and the youngest are um overweight so they both, everyone in the order, because so many people have the name Jason, and his name is Jason, so many people in the order have the name Jason, that when kids would be talking in the order, like, oh, Jason said this, then we'd be like, Jason who? Because there's so mm -hmm. many Jasons. Like which one? So they would say, and I quote, this is an order quote, Big Jason, or Fat Jason. <laughs> so ex to this day, Ooh. people are like, oh, Big Jason said that, or <laughs> Fat Jason You know, in a lot of cultures, that's not offensive, though, so... Yeah. It's mostly here in America that that's an offensive thing. Really? When I went to Barbados, then it was a compliment to be called like chubby or bigger or fat. Because so, it doesn't mean that you're wealthier. It like? just means you have lots of food, so you have lots of resources, lots of stuff. But yeah. But yeah. Here, I'm sure it's he kind doesn't of like it. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't like him. Well, we honestly. we don't need to assume <laughs> that. Maybe he likes it. We don't know. <laughs> I'm sure he. Likes it. Just um. But he. That's the thing is with him. I don't have a problem, like, trying, like, I'm not trying to hurt his feelings, but saying it how it is, and if it hurts his feelings, it hurts well, his feelings. Well, and so everyone, well, everyone already knows who we're talking about, actually, so <laughs> I guess we're good. Yeah. I was going to say, to describe no, which one. No, we can but... say, Jason, he's, mm -hmm. he's the youngest of Paul's brothers. I think it's even on the internet. It, and, um, so Paul's the leader, but Jason is the youngest of, for anyone who's new here, sorry, Paul's the leader of the cult we came from, and Jason is the youngest brother. His number is 49. Um, I think he is, yeah, that, will this will be the last number of the seven. We went through all of them. I wonder why his number is 49. Because that means know, our dad got a number before him? Yeah, that, isn't what? that weird? And our dad got his number before, before he left Before he got his second wife, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think so that I don't really know interesting. if maybe dad got his number because um, Paul, re remember Paul really wanted dad to work for the order, but dad would have had a lot of money if he would have worked for this other company on oh, the outside. Oh, so that so maybe think might have been a persuasion That was an enticing, factor. yeah, to be mm. like, stay here. But um, Interesting. But knows? also, I think our dad is probably older, right? Because our dad's older than Paul, and so maybe yeah. Oh, yeah, he's definitely a factor. Older. So. But um, I, yeah, who knows? Dang. Anyway, so so what what I was saying about the 49 though is that's why they like the 49ers. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah. They love the 49ers mm -hmm. football team just because his number <clears throat> is 49. Nope. But um I have a special treat for you guys today. We got some quotes from his own kids and from people who knew him that are going to talk about him. So if he's watching, these are for you. <laughs> <laughs> um but I also have my I want to have my personal thing that I want to say about him and then we will go on. Um I personally have a lot to say about him because he is the one that was married to our aunt, um, Andrea. Mm -hmm. You know this whole story. Yeah. Uh, my dad's sister married him, and she is his sister, <laughs> half sisters, and they, that was his first wife was his half sister, and I obviously wasn't there when this all happened, but uh, if you want to hear that story, I'll link it down below. Sorry, I should have linked it down below. I didn't think. To do that but i'll link it down below afterwards her whole story is on my channel and she ends up marrying jason and passing away and mm -hmm. her baby is still in the order um she died giving birth so i feel like it kind of started off rocky with our family and and his family well it's the same family because they're siblings mm -hmm. right so he is our uncle but um so his first wife was her and now he has let me tell you how many wives he has Sorry, I want to make sure I'm accurate. If you want, if you're more curious to hear more about him, you can go to uh, Cult of Cup of Coffee 17 and then um, Jacob's story. That's his own son and he talks about him. But he has, he had 11 wives and two died, which is, was our aunt who died as a teenager giving birth. Um, 11 wives, two died, one left. And the sad thing is the two that died, the one that died was the one giving birth to this child that's in the order still. And then the next wife that was taking care of that child, because he wasn't going to take care of the child, she also died. So we're very curious. I'm very curious to know who's taking care of this child. Anyway, 11 wives, two died, and one left him. So he has eight right now that we know of. Roughly 70 to 100 kids between those wives. Um, I asked 
if some of the family would like to say some things. I was hoping that Jacob could be here, but I think he had some stuff going on. Anyway, this is just the notes that I was given. He does not want to be proven wrong. He doesn't take accountability for his actions. He collects toys. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Jesse have that, that in common. <laughs> I wonder if they yeah, bond yeah. over that. That's so weird. He was. The, he is the baby of the family. So. Yeah. And oh. we do know this. We've talked about this before, but it's been said that, <laughs> though. So the baby that, so the wife that died a te- as a teenager, uh, giving birth to this baby, who's now he, he's older than us, but he hmm. is on. He there's disability checks that are getting sent, and they uh, ever since I was even in the order. I remember hearing that those checks were going straight to Jason and he was using them to buy toys. Like, we all were hearing that. Wow. And even people in his family were getting very upset that he was doing that. That's what we were told. Dang. Anyways, that's why I just wanted to make sure you guys know what, what... Oh, I don't know if you guys know what toys are. Sorry. Toys is Star Wars toy. <laughs> Wait, well, Or any type it's of like collectible all sorts toy. Of, yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like most of you... I'm, yeah, toys most of you may know stuff. what I'm talking about, but... Like, they, he mostly gets them from, like, Comic-Con events and stuff, right? Different things like that. Yeah, I think so. Or, like, I don't know where. How am I supposed to know where they get them? Well, <laughs> does, he de- does, like, dress up and go to Comic-Con and things, right? You know, I think like Jesse's, a big thing for them. Jesse's, I don't know if Jason dresses up. Oh, I, I thought they both did. I was did, honestly but... shocked that Jesse did, too. I don't know yeah. why I was shocked. I don't know why oh. I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, collects yeah. toys, and I ha- have been told by a family member, he has Rolex watches. What? Yeah. Dang. Why? That's interesting. <laughs> I, I bet he never ate out of the dumpster. <laughs> interesting. Oh. Rolex watches uh, has gold coins. That's actually a big thing in the order. They like to collect. Uh, we were into a lot silver. of people have collections. Uh, yeah. A lot of order homes will have a safe with silver in it. And they're really into like um, what investing. That investing. But like, like, remember when Bitcoin came out well you mean cryptocurrencies well like well, bitcoin was big way back yeah. when we were there there mm-hmm. was a lot of people jumping on that yeah they just like the idea of investing in things because they you know they always have the conspiracies and don't trust the government mm-hmm. so they're like always looking for alternatives if the u.s government like uh, money doesn't work anymore yeah. or something then they i knew of a stuff, group of but... people in the order that like really thought because the d- d- you know what dinar is it's oh the coin dinar <laughs> dinar um like the dinar currency money. yeah right? yeah so there there was this group of people in the order i don't know where they got this information but they were convinced <laughs> so that it was funny. gonna blow up and it was gonna do so good so they went and bought like so i think I, one of one person I, I know bought like a million dollars worth in dinar and they're like they were ready to like they were literally looking for houses that they, they were thought like, they when were gonna it, be when so it's, rich it's gonna hit this year like they would say that every year <laughs> And it still hasn't hit, you guys. But it's gonna hit. <laughs> and honestly, hasn't it been going down even? So they've been know. losing. I lots should of money keep track of that stuff, but I, yeah. I feel like I, I will be honest. I like silver, and I will mm-hmm. buy when it's well. Low. Silver and gold are like you know they're so old. They're very like they don't grow a ton. They're not gonna make you a ton of money, but they are the most like consistent. So you're not gonna lose a ton of money. So I think those are safer options. To me, like, oh my goodness, one of my bullet points to talk about in my life is just cryptocurrencies in general because those Today? just go crazy. Okay, let's save yeah. this for later. But I do want to, since we're talking about gold, <clears throat> uh, I maybe I'll leave this link down below too. I don't know if you guys, I've I said this before and some of you may not have heard this, but there was a time where the police were called by Paul's first wife, Patty, because someone had tried to steal gold from her basement. Oh, you yeah. You guys know this story? And then it was weird because you see these news reports on it and they're like, all of a sudden... Patty's not calling anymore because they're, they're like, why do you have so much gold in your basement? And then she's like, oh, mm-hmm. crap. They started asking questions. Mm-hmm. And the order hates getting police involved all the yeah. time. Like, we've even had family meetings where I've seen our dad be like, you never call the police. We will solve it through our family or through our patriarchy. Like, one way or the other, through the order people, we'll solve it. Never get the cops involved. Even if it's something major or, or like, illegal or all this craziness, he just says never. Like, they're super against it. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like they treat you like you're a traitor if you do. Like, how mm-hmm. dare you do that to us? Yeah, but it's also, to me, it makes me kind of like they, I realize that they are scared, you know? They're clearly afraid of having um, the police help in any way because I feel like they'll find more issues and problems I bet if they try to. It's because yeah. it's happened before. Yeah, that too. Uh-huh. They've been like, why are you abusing your kids? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And they're like, mm-hmm. you know what? 
I didn't mean to call you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is. It's for good reason because <clears throat> these people have to investigate. Mm-hmm. I also feel yeah. like that's the reason why they don't like hospitals. Is because I really do think because when you it can get them into yeah, more when trouble, when you take a baby into the hospital, like, if they need, oh. which sucks, but it's 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 a double edged sword, I guess, because you take a baby into hospital because your baby's gonna die, okay, and you're in the order, but you're in the order, so you believe in hitting your babies because they tell you that if your baby's being disrespectful, oh, <laughs> they really yeah. believe that your baby yeah, should know this one's by way the age. Sad, it's yeah. crazy. So then there's, I really do think there's been times where they take them into the doctors and then the doctors have to report to DCFS if they see mm-hmm. bad bruising on these babies or like signs of neglect. Yeah. So I'm sure it happened that way to a few families. That's but really sad. Anyway, so there's like multiple reasons, but yeah, it's, it is sad because it's like, I don't know, but doctors should be doing that. That's a way to protect these kids. Mm-hmm. No, that's really, that's why I feel like if they're, I don't know, if order members would take their kids to hospitals and just do more of the regular things, then they would realize how many, how many things they're doing wrong, you know, yeah. and they can get the help. But instead up. of acknowledging that maybe I shouldn't be doing that, they, they're, this is the Lord's work and we, we trump everything else. Mm-hmm. We trump the law. We trump the, you know, well, I mean, we know we, we were there. <laughs> yeah. We know what it's like. Thank you, Christina, Another for the donation. donation. Sweet. Hi, Ag- Aggie. It says, hi, Amanda. Hi, Eskel and everyone. Glad What's up, Aggie? Here. <laughs> okay. Their note is also that he's very paranoid. And it was interesting to hear. Mm. I heard a lot of stories about how paranoid he is. And paranoid, they were claiming yeah. that, that uh, Jason has bulletproof windows all in all of... What? Ev- which I hear is illegal to have Damn. every single window like that. Is that true? In what, a house? Because or? you have to be able to escape if there's a fire. Well, as long as they can still illegal. open, right? I don't think they can. They're like bulletproof Wait, they're like sealed. Sealed Because windows? wouldn't that defeat the purpose of a bulletproof window if there was a little, you know? Yeah, but what if they would have to have some latch to open it, wouldn't they? How, why would you have all the windows in your house not be able to open? That seems so dumb. bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, but the glass could be bulletproof, but still be able to slide open, right? What did they right? get to do that, too? You know? That's a good question. That's not going to mm. ask questions. Well, here's the thing. As long as they can open, I don't see why that would be illegal. If they're, s- like, welded shut, though, yeah, that's definitely illegal. <laughs> like, how, how, the window's useless. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? You can't get through it at all. Huh. Sorry, I see this comment, and I can't ignore it because it's going to bother me. Beth says, silver is predicted to rise a lot soon. I need to know how much silver is worth. <laughs> no. How much silver... Mm-hmm worth because when i bought it was uh 18 dollars and then i sold i bought a bunch for 18 and then i sold them and they were each like Ooh, over it's 25 at 20 right now okay so, so that's not, not huge yeah it was at 25 my when i sold mine biggest Sorry. silver purchase was way back when i was still in the order and like the big old hype everyone told me it was so great but i bought like 500 dollars i think a little bit more <laughs> worth of silver when it was at like 35 dollars an ounce <laughs> like, basically the max not. it has been my entire life and that's when I bought the most silver. Yeah. I've ever bought. I don't know anything <laughs> about this stuff, but I will say uh, from from how I've been watching it and my from, through my buying and selling experience, which is not very much, it's a good deal when it's under twenty. Yeah, I, I think basically, and mm. then because it always rises to at least over twenty five within yeah, a short period. Yeah, I think throughout too. our lifetime period, then it's like. I think like 22 to 25 has been the average throughout the years that yeah. we've been alive. But so. I do also feel like I. I, I was not smart by just buying at 18 and then selling at 25 unless I had like a what? huge... What? That's way good though. Well, yeah. That's a good profit margin. That's like super rare in Six dollars a coin. So as long as yeah. you had a lot. But let's say you mm-hmm. only bought... If you're like, oh, well, you're so nervous about it and you're only buying one coin, just buy it. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. it's not like, you know... You're only going to make a big difference if you're investing a lot of money, basically. Yeah. But. And I... it's Yeah. I, I think I bought like... Probably saying like five hundred dollars worth, five hundred mm-hmm. to a thousand dollars worth of it, and then yeah. yeah, if that happens and you have that many coins, it can, it didn't double. <laughs> See, mm-hmm. it didn't even make me that much. I'm still talking about it, <laughs> <laughs> but it was exciting. It, it was, was. Still fun, it's like gambling, but, but a little more steady. But it's like you got really lucky and it worked out for you. But for me, it was like I'm holding on to it. I've held on to it still till now because I'm like, uh, it's still worth less. Than what I <laughs> So. <laughs> will not sell it until it's $40 a coin. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I know yeah. people too who will sell it and they're like, oh, this is such a good deal. It's going to go back down. And then it keeps rising. <laughs> and they're like, dang it. Mm-hmm. You can it's say the same about It's very hard to too. predict for sure. Yeah. Sorry, we're getting <laughs> off topic. <laughs> say we're from the order. <laughs> we really, and I'm not saying every family in the order does this, but most families in the order have a silver corner troop. <laughs> well, and uh, everyone in the order just has this hope in this dream to like make money magically. <laughs> <laughs> so I think everyone, yeah, everyone everywhere wants to just snap their fingers and it's there. Mm-hmm. But also, I was reading this thing about um, how people who are born in cults and like super strict religions, uh, really heavily involving this God idea, uh, mm-hmm. are more likely to believe in um, conspiracy theories. And um, I think that that's why a lot of them believe in the dinar and like all of these you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Not not saying that the dinar is not going to happen, <clears throat> but it's a very low chance. A lot of things that are very you know, maybe there's no proof. <laughs> but it's easier to believe in things that have no proof because you came from a cult where you just listen to Paul, you know? Mm-hmm. And you just, yeah. you know, kind of like Warren Jeff's group. They're, they're like, not all of them, but some of them are like, he is kind of come out of prison. He is coming out oh, of prison, yeah. whether you like it or not. And we're like, you, you can't mm-hmm. convince him that he's not. True. But sorry, I cut you off. Well, I was just going to say, I love that saying, I just saw this on, on like YouTube or something, where they're like, I, it makes sense not to believe in all conspiracy theories because they're crazy. But to not believe in any conspiracy theories because you got like, there's got to be something. There's no way the government has gone this long without making mistakes and wanting to like hide something or do something about it. You know, it's like, and I hear so many like off the wall crazy conspiracy theories, but then I hear some that are like, that makes a lot of sense, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, I get scared I because it. literally when I first left the order, I le- I believed every <laughs> conspiracy theory. Because at first I'd be like, what? Michael Jackson did die. We had a funeral for him. And then I'd watch one video. It's one video. And I'd be like, he's alive. He's alive and he went to his own funeral. Like, dead. He's hiding among <laughs> us, you guys. So I try really hard not to listen to conspiracy theory, Like, not to just believe them. Because I think that my mind may still be a little bit like that. Like, what? If, you know? mm, well, well, but, things like that. I don't care if people died or not. It's like I, I don't want to dive into <laughs> all of that. It's fine. I, well, he's gonna die soon or he is, whatever. But to, the ones that get me are the government conspiracy theories, man. Like the all the things that did. Well, that a little bit, but mostly things with like the military and like the weaponry and like all the things that they have and supposedly are hiding. You know how they're way more advanced than our civilization really is right now, or that we know of, and things like that. It's like those things really get to me. Oh yeah. Well, well, those things seem like well, they're not. Some of them aren't conspiracy theor- theories, though. If you think of like the the M, what is it called, the MK Ultra yeah. experiment, where they tried drugs on the the people without them oh, knowing. and tested yeah. on people, yeah. So those mm-hmm. that's all, all that we know of, you know. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that freaks me out. But then also it leaves room for conspiracy <clears throat> theories to probably make more sense. You know, mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah. And I've had personal one on one conversations <laughs> with people that are from the military that have shared their experiences that they've had and they sound very believable. And I honestly, like, most of the time, I'm like, I don't see why they have a reason to lie. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I believe them. Sometimes I get so scared <laughs> because we came from believing so hard in a cult leader. And then I do that. Like, I, why would they lie? <laughs> why would they lie? <laughs> And I have to keep remembering that not everyone thinks the same way as us, too, mm-hmm. though. People have their motives, too. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, yeah. So easy to <laughs> believe things. Like, I was having... Okay, this is probably... Okay, off topic. So off topic. But I went to brunch, and Marianne was there. And we literally had this conversation where she was like, yeah, the same thing. Like, conspiracy theories and da-da-da-da. And I brought up, like, yeah, did you know if you come from a cult, then it's more likely blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, I don't really believe in much of those conspiracy theories. I'm like, oh, yeah. People in the order believe that we never landed on the moon. And she's like, well, you know, <laughs> you know, some of that stuff actually makes sense. <laughs> and I was like, really? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to cry. Okay, should we get back to this? Number 49. I just thought it was so funny because I'm just looking at I'm like, are we all just going to be like this forever? <laughs> That's okay, so okay, okay. Funny. Sorry, you guys. Oh I will get to your comments. Let, let, we are so. This is why we can't my do jaw life is together. hurting, you guys. Oh. Are you guys even enjoying this? Because I am. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so the gold, the, the silver, he's paranoid, blames everything on other people, very controlling, forces some of his girls to say, I love you, and give him a hug. I think a lot of order parents do that. Mm-hmm. I wonder why they said specifically girls. 
um, to say I love you and give him a hug. Um, loves. Um, what's He Man? Do you know He Man? Is it a comic? He Man. It must be a loves He Man huh. the way that Jesse loves Star Wars. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna wow. look that up now. He Man. Maybe it's a. But yeah, all of comic. these traits sound very. They they check those boxes on the if you Google um traits of a narcissist. Doesn't want to be proven wrong. Doesn't take accountability for their actions. It's like they have this, I'm on a pedestal. And er, like they could do these things and other people do them, but they can't do them. Like scolds the people for doing them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That is He-Man? What the? Interesting. I wonder why. They look super old. Yeah. Old little cartoons or something. Okay, sorry. I have another thing. Um, What did Heather say? I'll half buy into conspiracy theories from time to time, but I never wholeheartedly believe anything. I know. I don't mm-hmm. believe anything. I didn't ever. <laughs> Not all the way. <laughs> I don't even believe in myself. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. That's um, a good point. You always got to take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah, by. we just did a podcast episode on Good Culture Crew Podcast, and one of the quotes, I think it was Crystal's quote, she was like, only believe half, um, like a quarter of what you hear and half of what you see. And I was Whoa. like, that's an interesting concept. Which, by yeah. the way, anyone who was confused listening to that Culty Crew podcast episode, it was filmed a while ago. So I think some of you were thinking that um, Jessica and uh, Allison were going to be on this live. Because at the very end of the Culty Cup, I was like, so tune in on Culty Cup for Jessica and Allison. That was when I was in Idaho. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I just realized that today. So for anyone who caught that and was like, what? You lied. I'm sorry. It was an old episode. It was supposed to go <clears> up <throat> that week. Anyway, this is a quote that someone from... Jason's family wanted me to share. Someone who knew Jason pretty well. You can't change someone who doesn't see an issue with their actions. Another one. That's true. Growth is painful. Change is painful. But nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. And to be honest, when I first read that, I got chills. Because I was Mm -hmm. like, that was us in the order. Mm Mm-hmm. That was, I'm sure a lot of people in the world feel that way. <clears throat> but, anyways, I want to, sorry, I want to make sure that I'm getting all of this stuff out there about him. And we did say he has uh, roughly 70, 70 kids to 100 kids. Okay. Um, I have more that I want to say, but I feel like I already have so many videos that kind of go into, dissect all of this. So maybe I will just put um, links, say, if you want to hear more about number 49, We've talked about him here, 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 you know, and link it down below. But yeah, the youngest one, we, t- we covered most all of it. I just don't know how old he is. I should have figured that out. <laughs> we can roughly hmm. estimate by based off of how old Paul is in him. But oh, anyways, you all have anything to add? No, I can't think of their, I can't even think sure of Paul's age right now. I'm pretty sure he does not like our family either, like at all, like at oh, all. Oh, no, no <laughs> but, way. And it's like multiple multiple things that led to that like yeah. he already doesn't like families in general and then more well, stuff families happens, outside but. of the seven brothers i feel like he's definitely like I, what is the word it's not racist but it's like being biased against anyone that's not in your own family he's mm-hmm. definitely that whatever if there's a word for that he's that yeah but um do we have anything nice to say anything that anything at all <laughs> oh i sorry i forgot to say he had none of his kids leaving for a while, which is kind of shocking. But in 2018, <clears throat> our friend Julie left. She was the first one to leave. And she was married, and she left the guy and left the, the group. So wow. good good for her. The first one to go. It's always the hardest for the first kid to leave. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of paves the way for the rest. And I think uh, Jacob was the youngest one. Jacob was sent to... Um, yeah, Jacob, like, just left. <laughs> yeah, he was, a, really he was a teenager, young. and they were trying to send him to rehab um, and lie to get him into the rehab so that he would be stuck. Mm-hmm. So, and that's another example. They were trying to use rehab to, like, co- coerce the kid into listening to them, but then the people at the rehab facility were realizing that the parents are crazy and were, like, yeah. taking the, the kid's side way more, and then they were, like, trying to get him out of there mm-hmm. and everything. But I'm it's sure backfiring. it's it's um, such a rare case for because I'm sure most people would not think to put their kid in rehab because they're not going to church. But maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I think it's more than that. It's like church is the, like the underlying thing, but like it's more of like oh they're not listening to me. They think they're being so rebellious and bad just for not obeying their every command. You know, it's like 
there's a lot that they think a kid should do for parents that really mm-hmm. sh- doesn't doesn't need to happen. They that's the thing that these order parents need to unlearn that it's your kid's responsibility to have that relationship with you. That is mm-hmm. a a thought that you need to just throw out of your brain right now. It is not your kid's responsibility. I've been hearing that multiple times from so many kids feeling so guilty for not having that relationship with their parents when it is not their responsibility. Mm-hmm. And it's the way it's a, the parents don't even, probably don't even realize they're doing this. It's a way for them to not have any repercussions. And, and for anyone out in the world, too, mm-hmm. that's feeling guilty for not having that relationship with the parent, the parent brought you here. Mm-hmm. And if the parent's always putting on you, like, oh, you don't come see me, you this, you that, if they're not putting that effort into it either, it's a two-way street. But I, I in my opinion, believe it is the parent's responsibility way over the child's. Oh, yeah. Because and it's literally... Um, uh, psychologic, well, no, was it? Psy... It's like manipulation. There's a quote no, on this, there, actually. I thought I had it. Yeah. Um, my psychology teacher was talking about it, and basically, he, he was trying to help us figure out how you can pinpoint and notice it. And long story short, if it is them saying, using love as a threat uh, to get something out of you, that's how you know they're using it. Um, it's, it's like, I want to say it's psychological abuse. Is that right? Psychological I, abuse? I, I would say that, yeah. I think okay. that's the word he used. But yeah, if if they are using um, the term love or a type of love to get something out of you, then that's basically them abusing that. And that's, that's how you can know if it's that kind of abuse. Yeah. And it was actually one of you guys, uh, YouTube username, Flop, Flop, I don't know how to say this, F-L-O-P <laughs> and then S-T-E-R, but it's a spaced out one. But they commented, and I reposted it on my Instagram because I really liked this comment. It says, and you liked it too, the child sets the relationship, question mark. I was in a training on one of my jobs as a part-time parent aide, and we learned about the mindsets of abusive parents. They parent, parentify and adultify young children as infants, and they put the adult responsibilities on them and assign sophisticated motives to their behavior, um, like way beyond their developmental level. Uh, and that's how they basically absolve themselves of having any responsibility. They will mm-hmm. not claim. And that's also why you'll see a lot of parents be like, that's not my fault that the kid left. And like, it's, it's almost like they're pointing the finger at each other or mm-hmm. pointing it at so- something else. Like, it, oh, it wasn't me. Or why are they sad? Like, that's their own fault. That's not mine. Mm-hmm. You know, never claiming any responsibility for anything that, that has happened to their kids ever. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that because I know that there's some older parents probably watching this right now. <laughs> So maybe take some notes, you know, and honestly, maybe your kids will like you more. <laughs> I don't know if you're like these kids. I don't know. Maybe they'll like you more if you take my advice. You That's know? kind of like a little bit of my fear, which maybe I don't need to worry about. I was just going to say, like, I, I, hope... like, I feel like they're going to oftentimes take this and like, I don't know. They don't like... listen to us at all. But well, that probably too. here's the thing. <laughs> if they do take it and, and then they're nicer to their kids. And their kids want to be a part no, of the family. No, that's a good thing. I just hope thing. they don't take this and use it to manipulate their kids more. Or like use it in another way, you know, or something. Yeah. Well, know. they're going to do what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. But um, I just hope that they, you know, follow the one above another and do the right <laughs> thing. <laughs> Uh, I, know, just, I just, just wish use their stuff against them. Well, no, to Paul. no. If there's one thing that I wish would get through to them is that there's so much to be gained if they would truly love their own family and love the kids that they have. Because it's yeah. like they're always so on condition and like only if this happens, only if mm-hmm. these everything's going right. Whereas if they would just let that all go and just love the family that they have then I feel like they would just have so much more peace and joy in their lives. Yeah. And, and the sad so thing, too, better. is they have all these adult responsibilities on these kids, but the kids don't get any ad- adult consent mm-hmm. ever. They they can't choose where they get to work. They can't choose where, who they get to marry. They can't choose. But then they're, they're forcing them to do all these adult things, but they can't even make anything up for themselves as an adult. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's like they make them do all the stuff that they don't want to do themselves almost, and then they, they take all of the... But it's Freedom. even worse than that because they also expect all these things and try to give them all these responsibilities, but don't give them any of the life advice or the good habits or the good skills and tools to accomplish those mm-hmm. things. So it's like expecting something from someone that you've never taught them even how to do it. Yeah. It's like you're setting them up to fail. And yep. It's so sad. Which also I think a lot of the time they don't care to teach. Well, they have a lot of kids too. Well, so they, they don't, don't want to teach them too much because if they become like self-sufficient smart. and smart, then they'll go into their own thing. So it's like mm-hmm. they're trying to limit them and tear them down at the same time as trying to make them do all these things they need them to do. Do you like, ever see a similarity in the order and like how some countries are ran and it scares you a little bit? 
Hmm, like really some countries don't like them. The, like, I don't want to say specific ones because I'm not very smart in history and things like that. But <laughs> I did have someone from a different country come and teach in our class in um, sociology. The sociology teacher asked them to come talk about how she actually got put in jail for having a different belief than what the... It's kind of like how in Barbados, oh. everyone's mostly Catholic, mm -hmm. but they're free to choose. Mm -hmm. This place, it was like, if you are actively... like She she would do this meditation thing that was a different um, religion, and she got caught doing that and got put in prison. Whoa. And so I was like, this is Dang. like the order. It's yeah, like, ba well, back... It, just if you go farther enough in history, that's why we left, um, came mm -hmm. over here to America and stuff like that. There's so many countries that have that control and want to force their religion on people and stuff. And force it them, just gets crazy. Crazy. Well, because it, it also benefits them to have so much control over them mm -hmm. and they get more money and they get more, you know, yeah. some of this scares me when I hear um, uh, a different leadership talking about things that and it's somewhat normal for them and mm -hmm. how how um, it sounds exactly like the order, mm -hmm. like the exact word for word about what they're doing. And someone mm -hmm. was saying my brain is dead right now, but <laughs> socialism. Is that what it's called? No. No, no, no. I, that can't socialism. be right. Sorry, my brain is so dead. I can't think of the term, but there is a term for what, what when what the government the controls it. Oh, oh yeah, with the the order system. It's like a hierarchy. Yeah. Is one of them, but you're right. There's a, a different like a, term yeah. for the whole group. I'll think about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I feel like I've been ignoring you guys, but I, I had so much I wanted to get out there communism? and I didn't want to forget. Is it communism? I can't remember. Dang it. Ugh, I'll, 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 I'll do my research and we'll talk more about it this is later communism let, let me sorry i'm so scared that i'm <laughs> saying it wrong but also i'm running off of like no sleep right now so i'm like i'm hoping that i rewatch this and i don't sound like i'm just speaking gibber gibberish a political theory derived from karl marx oh he's a i know who karl marx is advocating class war and leading to a society in which all property is publicly owned and each person works and is paid according to their abilities and needs <laughs> did you even understand that it's kind of like living in a society where no one owns well the order no one owns anything and you're just mm -hmm. giving what you're needing so kind of see that's kind, why yeah. yeah i think it could relate to that did you get any sleep <laughs> I stayed up till like one, so I definitely yeah, I need more late. sleep. But I was hanging out with Michelle, well <clears throat> Michelle, Melissa. <clears throat> it was fun, and I got to hang out with Harper too. She Aww. Um, Speaking of Harper, uh, I Michelle's had a note daughter. to talk about this. <laughs> Sorry, if it, no right? one knows who Harper is, Michelle's daughter. Is what you guys should know by now. We talk about her a lot. She's like our favorite little girl, and yeah. I got a bunch of clips of her like just talking to my camera and like saying stuff so i'm gonna put together this funny little video of her just saying things and mm -hmm. stuff so we we interviewed cool. her and um mm -hmm. it was interesting we asked her uh where babies come from <laughs> 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 yeah. that's one of the questions so she's really ready. good at answers though she's got a lot of really fun answers she's very so. smart <clears throat> and she's uh, only like two isn't she how old is she Harper? three Three, She's okay. Three, and she already knows where babies come from. <laughs> <laughs> She's really smart. Spoiler alert. She's really good at talking too. It was I was mm, very impressed. Very talkative. All <clears throat> all night she was like, ring 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 ring. <clears throat> pick up your phone. <laughs> and then I'd pick it up. Hello. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over. Okay, come to my house. Okay, bye. And it's ring, so ring. cute to see the changes because when we first pulled out the camera, she was all like super shy and like didn't want to say anything. But then just a few yeah. minutes in, she's just talking all all out and just mm -hmm. saying everything and talking a bunch. It was so cool. She's such a cutie. We love Harper. <laughs> Hi, Amanda and Esco. Hi, Scarlett. Communist. See, someone did say communism. Communism. Okay, maybe that was right then. I place my, let's see, pink <sighs> parasol says, I place myself directly under Christ, but I do have a mature church located in Burbank. Ooh, in I like Burbank. Burbank. I have had many supernatural experiences. Ooh. You know what's crazy? Someone was saying that America is the most, like, um, well, obviously, because we came to America to, you know, freedom of religion was one of the reasons to come to America, right? Freedom. Mm -hmm. And so there's someone that was saying that's why there's so many cults and also um, a lot of people who, I think it was a TV show, he said, it was the guy from Dumb and Dumber. I remember thinking, that's the guy from Dumb and Dumber. And he was talking, I don't know what show this is, but he was saying, America is number one in believing in angels. Which oh, makes sense. I love that speech he gave, huh? Of yeah. all the stuff about America. Oh, man. I that don't, was really cool. I wish I knew what I was talking about. But um, it is, I think it's true because you talk to other people from other countries and, and like church and well, like religion yeah, because, isn't number one thing that they talk about here. Yeah, well, I believe here that in Utah, 100%. Yeah. It's like, what's your name? How old are you? Are you LDS? 
that's like the third question that they ask. Maybe a little less now that we're getting more diversity, which is good. Yeah, it's finally Utah has finally become less than um, fifty percent. I want to say mm -hmm. LDS because it used to always be the majority, and now it's finally. Um, well, dang it, I need to double check that. But it just changed. It so. used to be above fifty percent, and now it's below fifty percent, or something like that. Huh. So yeah, but a lot of it has to do with Californians are moving in here a ton. But a I've met people. some Californians that moved in here, and they they were LDS. Oh, really? They, but they were like, it's weirder, Elias, here. And yeah, like, it's yeah, definitely yeah. a different vibe. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, I wanted to say something about Post Malone because he moved here too. But I don't know how it relates. Do you think he's Elias? <laughs> he's cool. No, I don't think so. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, he could be. What? He could be. He, he talks about the, well, he says um, all of his drug dealers moved to um, moved Utah, to Utah and became Mormon. If you listen to that song, he goes, ooh, ooh. What's it called ooh, though? Oh, ooh, feeling, feeling, feeling Whitney. Whitney. Whitney, feeling yeah. Whitney. He mm -hmm. says, um, he sings about song. how his his plugs moved to Utah and became plugs. Mormon. That's what it called. Is that a, is that a plug as a drug dealer? Right. I don't know. Am I gonna get demonetized? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know if you if you say drugs, it's not a big deal. But if you say the drug, then it did mute mine. Uh, it got rid of my uh, um AdSense? monetization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only once though, and I think it was because I I was talking about a. A hard Don't drug. <laughs> yeah, I won't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, I'm just kidding. Sometimes I don't care, but lately I've been caring, mm -hmm. especially because my Tom Green video is not. It, it has the yellow thing, so I had to go get it sent in to be like, why? Does, why are you saying that I um have to have you know? Yeah, and you and watched YouTube, the whole thing, making sure it didn't. No, no, not right? that one. The the one where I'm doing my makeup, talking about. Sorry, this is so off topic, but that one for some reason is like, oh, your video is not suitable for all viewers, so you only get half the ad sense. You know how it's a yellow one instead of a green mm -hmm, dollar mm -hmm. sign on there. Well, that so can just why. be if you talk about anything that's too extreme or, like, graphic, too, Maybe. right? Did you mention, like... But, see, I don't get it because it? this one, I talked about I talked about abuse and things like that, but not as much as a certain video. I talked way more in this video, and that green green dollar sign... It still was it, fine? There was no yellow dollar sign. Yeah, yeah, I feel like sometimes YouTube, you just got to... It's a hit and miss. You got to figure out it's just a hit and their miss. algorithm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for your advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm newer to this than you. I'm not going to know if you don't know. Actually, you know a lot of, like, his whole setup is way better than mine. <laughs> he, has a, he has all the best stuff, and I'm over here, like, still late to my live stream <laughs> saying 6 o'clock. <laughs> I'm just surprised you're still doing your lives on your <laughs> phone, even. Just only I on know, that. yeah. Well, because oh. I couldn't, we couldn't figure out how to get my camera to hook up to the thing. Anyway, sorry. This is probably a discussion for that you guys don't yeah. care about. Yeah, we we'll do our homework after this. But. but I do have a question. Do you guys know who Jordan and McKay are? I, I've Ooh. asked on my Patreon, but I don't know that I've asked on here. <clears throat> I feel like a lot of them should. Because, yeah. like, just the fact that I watch a lot of, like, stuff about cults and things, then they came up on my feed, and I know about yeah. them. But Selena says, Utah's Wild Paris Hilton's documentary is about a boarding school in Utah that was awful. Yep. I'm kind of, I really want to watch it. boarding school? Oh. It was in Provo, I'm pretty sure. <gasps> she, like, Dang. went and held signs up. Wow. Like, it was that bad. Um, but I'm kind of... I want to support and watch it, but I'm also scared that it's going to be very triggering. More but triggering than The Handmaid's Tale, though? That's that fake, one. though. You that's can kind true. of disassociate it. And, yes, sometimes I need breaks from that one. <clears> but <throat> when this is real and it's happening here in Utah, which that's I understand true, yeah. why a lot of people here in Utah don't know about Skate and Plug Me, mm -hmm. because they don't want to... It's too real. Oh, yeah. And a lot of it is too close to home for them. Mm -hmm. Like, I get recognized way more from people that aren't from Utah than from people who are. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Caroline, yeah. for the donation. Amanda, I sent you a DM about U.S. religious history earlier this week. If you're interested, I'm a nerd about that stuff. <laughs> so are we. Let's just geek out together, you guys. Yes. <laughs> we, we actually, I mean, for obvious reasons, <clears throat> kind of also why a lot of people who leave these, the order specifically, get really fascinated with religion right afterwards. I, oh, yeah. I definitely did. Well, Jacob because you go 18 years of your life where it's like, that is the top priority. That's supposed to be the thing that matters the most. It's the right and it's church. like, you're very fixated on it for a very long time. Yeah. I remember thinking kind of like how they talk about Joseph Smith. When Joseph Smith prayed to the Lord and he, then he was shown that none of the churches were right and he needed to make his own. I remember when I left feeling like I resonated with that a little bit in a weird way, like, this, if this is the wrong one, then I must find the right one, do, 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 mm -hmm. do, do, you know? And then I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I got so depressed. 
it's almost like the more you learn, the sadder you get, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, but the thing but is, you, you've the... got to come to terms with reality. And reality is not all butterflies and rainbows. There's a yeah. lot of harsh things that come with it. Yeah. But it's... I'd rather be real and have to accept that than just live a fake life and pretend like everything's fine and mm-hmm. just basically be acting my whole life. Yeah. Or like living living with these up because you are, are not ready to live with more knowledge and with mm-hmm. but with more knowledge also comes more opportunities and more you know more growth oh, yeah. but hi nancy i can't watch handmaid's tale the real world is scary and infuriating enough i know then you might not like my episode i'm coming out with about the handmaid's tale but the way you're doing it <clears throat> i really like it though because she is really like analyzing it and like comparing it to the different cults and to the order that we came from and stuff mm-hmm. and it's like it makes it way more fascinating. I and it's like. not going to be like we're watching it together. I'm just going to mm-hmm. show you. I literally, I'm watching, re-watching the whole thing and taking notes about everything and showing you how it is exactly, <clears throat> a lot of those parts that are exactly the mindsets of being in the order. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, <clears throat> there was one, um, it was such a pivotal, oh, is that the right word? Struck a chord with me. There's a part on Handmaid's Tale, and I can't get over this, how similar it is to your, the girl is like, needing help she needs someone to help her someone within gilead or whatever that place is called Mm -hmm. is like oh let me help you we have each other's back here and the girl looked at her like she was so like because in the order someone in the order can't even help you that much Mm -hmm. like they only have so much power i'm going to talk a lot about that one because there were so many times where who can you turn to for help to get out of this place? And it's like, who can you trust, too? Yeah, it's that, too. Oh. But also, even if you trust them wholeheartedly, they can't help you that much because they're mm-hmm. also there, and they don't know how to yep. get out. <laughs> it Just, like, too, like, um, <clears throat> how you thought that I was so broke when I left because Dad, I think Dad may believe that I was because I had an apartment, and the way he described having an apartment on the outside being so expensive and so this and this and this and that. Because he probably didn't even know what it was like. Mm-hmm. To even so have he just that. has his own belief system. So it's like your your knowledge is only so, <clears throat> you know, you obviously know mm-hmm. you were there. But yeah, I'm excited about that handmade tale. Can you tell? Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna so be interesting. Yeah, I was watching her watch one of the episodes. And she was just writing down everything, and like pausing it and like mm-hmm. analyzing it all. It was so crazy. So <laughs> if that video does bad, <laughs> I'm gonna be kind of sad. <laughs> She's dedicating so much time to it. But I also really enjoy it too. So, do you ever get those videos where like, oh, that sucks. It only got a few views, and I didn't. I basically paid way more money into making that video but mm-hmm. i really like enjoyed all my it. food challenge ones <laughs> like, they're so fun good. and like i love trying out all these new foods and doing challenges but they just don't do that good but maybe i, I just i i don't know i thought like i just got to find ways to make it more interesting but like my skydiving one like that one was awesome yeah. i loved it and it still did pretty well but not as much as i thought like yeah. spending all that money to go skydiving would be and all this stuff you know but it's yeah I I, my so favorites cool. on mine are my travel vlogs but those are my least viewed but they're still my favorite I wonder I why I feel like people love seeing people travel seeing new places I and love stuff. seeing it <laughs> yeah but I, I also, watch those all the time online yeah I'm gonna keep I'm gonna try remember how I told you guys I was gonna try to take a break and do one video a month that I really enjoy um <laughs> this handmade one is kind of but it's also a little bit triggering so mm-hmm. I don't know if that one counts as one, but I need to get back. What's into... your next one? What's your idea for your next one? After the handmaids? Yeah. The one that you want to do for just to enjoy for it. Fun? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. See? Because I think good. I know mine. What? Um, well, I also like doing shorts. I did. Mm-hmm. I posted my last shorts about parents and siblings and whatever. But uh, I'm going to do those for fun for sure. But I really want to do one where I just go out and like talk to strangers. Cause I watched um, That's Epic a lot. And I just love his style of just like going and just meeting random people on the streets or at some university campus or somewhere. <clears throat> and just like ask them a bunch of questions or like just ask them like the, are you smarter than a fifth grader questions or really anything. And just see people's intera- like reactions and like just what it's like being in the moment, basically going and running into just anyone and everyone and seeing how the conversation goes to me. That's just, is so fascinating to me because there's no actors. There's no setup. There's no real way to even prepare for what's going to happen. It's like whatever happens in those experiences and in those moments, it's like, it's real. You just, it's happening with those people you meet. 
And it's like, and if you've seen that, that's epic. He has some of the funniest encounters. Some of the, some of them are very awkward and weird, but it's like it makes me laugh so hard, and it's just interesting it, yeah. to me. I but. think didn't Loft do that on his channel? That's how he got started. He actually started in Utah. L A W F. I think it stands for Losing All Hope Was Freedom. Something like that. Oh. But he started here in Utah, and he would go up to people on um, the U- Utah campus. Utes. Oh, and Utah? He would just And he yes. actually met Joe Robinson doing that. What? On accident, he went up to Joe Robinson. Heck Isn't yeah. That and I almost feel Dang. like, I mean, I'm not going to speak for Joe, but I think that may have inspired Joe to start a YouTube. Oh, I don't know. that's so I should cool. ask him. I should have. Why have I never asked him that? Mm. But, um, and people are usually so willing to, like, just say something to the camera, you know? Yep. People love getting involved and saying hi, so it's like... I think his I videos were that. interesting, though, too, because Utah is such a different world. And mm-hmm. watching it is like, I, as a Utahan, know, but people probably not from Utah are like, why did they say that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially when you're like, um, I don't think this will de- demonetize it, but, like, there was one on uh, there was some a similar one. It wasn't that epic, but some other YouTuber was just went to BYU specifically and asked them questions about like like kind of like pornography and different stuff. And everyone was just like so like didn't know what to do and like freaking out, <laughs> and just going crazy. I and kinda they were just like, like that. just basic questions like, "Have you ever watched porn?" And they were just like, "Oh, oh, oh!" <laughs> freaking like, You're not you know, just, <laughs> just going crazy. It, wow. it, it was pretty funny actually. What's the, what's the video called it's just byu and then what's the youtuber i don't know i just i think all i saw was a shorts on it probably just um asking byu questions or something about um on um, byu campus because that was something in the title that's going to byu and asking questions and stuff we should definitely but um i have (laughs) questions similar to that for jordan and mckay because they grew up lds it's Uh different because you didn't grow up lds but Mm -hmm. you grew up more hardcore I feel like LDS. well, and I grew up in Utah, so I was always you know always had a little bit of the LDS influence, and I had a lot of LDS friends and yeah. stuff, you know. So, but there different. are some things that we will never know what it's like to go through necessarily because, like that with my adopted family, um, gambling. I was so shocked that they didn't gamble, but we really? were, yeah. Well, they wouldn't I even, remember they wouldn't even play with face cards. Well, not, oh, not that yeah, they were like anti true. it, but they were like, "Oh, we just don't have face cards because it's like gambling." And oh, I was like, "Yeah." But and we were playing with we poker were doing that chips all since the time we were little in the order. kids. And a lot of order That's families funny. love card games. Mhm. That's huge. Anyways, sorry. I I was holding this comment because I wanted oh. to talk about it. Shelby says Margaret Atwood, I believe that's the writer of Handmaid's Tale, actually wrote the book based on the tr- on true experiences throughout time women had to live those horrific things. Uh, that's, that's what I was sad about because I was like, when I watched The Handmaid's Tale, the first time I was shaking and I was like, this woman was either in the order (laughs) or knows, did a bunch of research about the order. But I think the reality is in a lot of scenarios, sadly, women were treated like that. And it's it's a real sad reality. Cause in my brain, I was like, she must've just researched like FLDS or, or Utah, uh, cults basically. Mm -hmm. And cults aren't just based in Utah. Like there's cults all over. Yeah, but the ones in Utah are specific. I feel like they're very, really don't like women for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) And I can say because I is a woman that came from one. (laughs) But um, Amanda and Eskel, I think it's the Black Menaces. The Black Menaces. That what? Yeah, I think you're talking about them now. The Black Men. The Black Menaces that do the BYU thing. Oh, I'll look it up. Let me see. What's that? Black menaces? Wow, they know who you're talking about. That's cool. I mean, with how ridiculous the rules are at those very religious universities, answering those questions could get them in trouble. That's a good point. Like, if you blur my face, I'll answer this question. Oh, that's true. Because, yeah, especially BYU Provo, like, they have a lot of rules. Okay, okay. I'm going to ask Jordan McKay about this. Hopefully they watch my stuff. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But I just heard of a term that's apparently very big in Utah in Draper for LDS people called soft swinging. Have you heard of that? I don't know. These things you keep, like when you said soaking, no, no, no. I was no, like, no, no, no. I've it's never a, heard no. of soaking before. Well, it's I never like, heard of yeah. soft swinging either. Yeah. Until I've never heard of soft it, swinging. apparently someone is famous because of this huge scandal that happened in Draper. It was two couples. You guys probably in know. Draper? I had a five hour dinner. Well, it was a brunch that turned into a dinner when Marianne was there and we were just gossiping back and forth about, just about people we don't even know. Like like, like this this scandal apparently. 
is it was two people married in the LDS church and another couple married in LDS church. And soft swinging is like you get to play with both couples, but you don't uh. actually have intercourse. But then something happened to where the, uh. they did an oopsie and actually did do it. And then divorces happened. And apparently... Wait, wait. Did they divorce <laughs> the other one? I said... That's exactly <laughs> I was like, so what did they do? A swap marriage too? A soft swap? (laughs) I'm just kidding. Anyway, I want to ask Jordan McKay because they also were the ones that... Jordan McKay is the first time I heard of soaking, actually. Oh, okay. Through their YouTube. Hmm. Anyway, sorry. Um, But yeah, that's something that apparently is big in Draper. Draper, Utah. And I'm just hearing about it now. And me and Marianne talked about it forever. We were like, this is so weird. Because we grew up in Utah our whole lives. But mm-hmm. I'm sure they hear about our weird stuff in the cults that are here. And they're like, well, I've been here my whole life. Never heard of that. That's true, yeah. Well, you're almost kind of living it by what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask all the seven brothers. I'm sure they know exactly what you're doing. I should shut up. <laughs> uh, I'm at an school. Did your mom or any of the members who stayed afterwards get in any trouble for appearing on EP? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyone Big who time. went back... They get scolded. Like, I cannot believe you well, took money from and that. And our siblings and have the hardest time making friends there, too. It's like they're treated so differently. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a <clears> lot <throat> of reasons for that. But, yeah, I feel like it got way worse when my mom went on the show. And there was this mm-hmm. thing going around that the Grant boys will never get married. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't hang out they with them. They even, the they're very specific about asking, are you from the first mm-hmm. wife or the second wife? Like, which wife are you from? Because we all look kind of the I same. I always got confused so for the first wife kids. Mm-hmm, but they want to know because it's like a big deal. If they will treat them worse if it's from our family, which is sad because the mm-hmm. first wife, like, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. It's, it's so dumb to treat people like that. But the order is doing that left and right. Left and right. And I have gotten to the point, well, I've told you guys this multiple times, I am not going to live my life in fear of what they're going to do to them anymore because my mom is the one that's choosing to stay there. Mm-hmm. And if she wants to blame me, she can blame me all she wants, but she's choosing, she chose to go back. She had a place, you know? Well, and it's like, if anything, it's going to show their true colors because I just picture myself being in, you know, being still in the order and seeing them have such hard judgments and opinions on someone, not even based off of that person, but just someone in their family doing something. It's like, yep. wow, okay, that's yep. so messed up. I, To be honest, though, I was guilty of it when I was a kid in the order. We thrived off of talking about, because how else... Well, yeah. gossip like spreads like wildfire yeah. there. And to, I had because to, you can only talk to each other. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and there was a lot of Two Face going on. They were like, "I oh, never yeah. said that. I never." She lying because <laughs> we all sucked at confrontation. <laughs> we hated it so bad. But I made sure when I left to try to actively not gossip. Like I had to actively mm-hmm. be like, "What well, am I doing?" And it's doing? like such a new experience and, and like breath of fresh air to not have to be fake anymore mm-hmm. just to say whatever mm-hmm. you want like just to be, be real, real. was like to. so new because in the order you're constantly like oh what type of personality am i supposed to have with this person and yep. like with this family in this How situation much can I tell like, them like, yeah they tell on me, but it's so. like now to just say whatever i can say my parents live plugging me i can say whatever i want and like not have to live a double life did it's you catch so yourself nice. uh, lying when you didn't need to after you left oh yeah well for like at least the first year year and a half maybe like I would lie for sometimes the most pointless reason. No yeah. reason at all. And it would be like, why? <laughs> like, why? Why did I do that? But I was just so used to it in the order. It I remember weird. I would walk away and be like, should I turn around and tell them that I'm just kidding? <laughs> because I'm going to have to pretend from now on that that's true. <laughs> it was bad, because, but that's man. the thing is, I, I feel like I tried not to do it even in the order because I, I would speak up more about how I felt about things. But then there were times where I knew I was going to get in trouble if I was honest. Mm-hmm. And so I would play the part a little bit. I don't know. I feel like I'm far away from that now, hopefully. Oh, yeah. And I feel like it was kind of a phase because I was only 18 when I first left. I was still figuring out who I was. And, you know, I was just I, I just 
went through that phase. I just always would want to like try new things, like tell different stories to different people. Like it was a lot of the times it was, do I want to tell them my whole story? Do I want them to know about Mm -hmm. my polygamous background and stuff? Whereas now it's like, I'll tell anyone and everyone. I don't care. But it's like when you first leave for someone and you play this weird game of like, who am I? Like, what do I want to be perceived as? Like trying to build this character of who you are rather than just being yourself. That's a good point because, oh, that's a really good point. Your uh reputation in the order is more important than who you are oh yeah and a lot of people you would see like i would i snuck out a lot and we would toilet Mm -hmm. paper and i would go toilet paper with people that would go to church the next day and deny 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 they would ever Mm -hmm. do anything like that and And they they would tell on you to protect themselves if they needed to and And you all knew that (laughs) you knew that that could happen why are we friends with them (laughs) but but it's because of though it is more of a survival tactic because literally they control your money they control your career the jobs you can have all the opportunities that you can have there, they can control. So it's like you're basically protecting yourself to be able to survive. And sometimes you got to lie when you're in there anyway. But. Yeah. Love and Life 9419 says <clears throat> soaking is also a thing in Amish and Mennonite communities. What? I had never heard of that in the order, but I will tell you there were things that all the time people would be like, we can't kiss, but we can do other things because you have to save your first kiss for your wedding day. So oh. I would hear all the time, like, that's worse than kissing what you did. Well, but I saved my first kiss for my <laughs> wedding day. Okay. Mm. But yeah, I also heard that, that, you know what, this is for a Patreon. If we're going to keep talking about soaking, <laughs> then there's some more stuff that I heard about that. But anyway, yeah, no more demonetizing. Uh, I have heard rumors of perfect LDS influencers on TikTok, YouTube, etc. that were swingers. Yes, I just heard about this. Just heard about it, and I was like, "What?" And it's because Marianne. Marianne knows all all the bachelorette, bachelor. Like she loves all. We used to go when we lived next door to each other. It was like the same apartment complex. She lived over on this other side of the lake, and we'd go to her house every week when the bachelor was on, and it was so fun. Aww. I never cared for the one where it was one guy and a bunch of girls because it made me feel like it was polygamy all over again. I, I, in the order we actually did, like, me and mom would sneak the, the other one. It was one girl and a bunch of guys. <laughs> and we would just go watch mm. it in her room. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people, girls in the order, like, secretly watch that one. Anyway, I love you, Amanda and Eskel. Aw, thank you. Happiest Northwest. Your picture looks so familiar. I feel like I was just talking to you on Instagram. Uh, Washington, D.C. is the swinger capital of the world. <laughs> Washington, D.C.? Really? Do they all just have guess. swings on their lawn? Yeah. Someone said, if you have a pineapple on your front porch, then that means you're a swinger. In Utah. I don't know how true that is. If you have a what on a your porch? A pineapple on your front porch. A pi- what? Uh, first of all, uh, why would you want your neighbors to know? But maybe it's just a thing that only they know. Yeah, but so, the, not What are they going to do? Knock on your door it. and be like, we <clears throat> too. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, what's the point? And then you just, you just go in and have a party? Like, I guess I don't know. Interesting. Uh, okay, since we're talking swingers, okay, Jay Snow, let's hear this. <laughs> is it true that an upside down pineapple? Oh, oh, oh! We were just saying that an upside down pineapple, a sign of judgment from me. Wait, 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 wait. A sign, no, no judgment, judgment from me at all. One of my girlfriends told me that on our weekly wine night and IDK. Oh my gosh, that's funny. She okay, literally so just said something the pineapple with the pineapple, thing. huh? But hers that's says upside down, so it must be a thing. Huh. But here's the thing: if I put a pineapple on my front porch. What's going to happen? Well, if it's upside down, you better watch out. You better watch out. <laughs> They're going to get you. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm going to Google this now. I'm going to read it later. <laughs> I feel like I cannot be honest with my LDS cousins. I am very close with them, but I can't talk about certain things with them about what is going on in my life. Okay. No, you should be able yeah. to, man. If I they're going to be this. telling you all of their stuff, then you should be able to be open yep. and honest with them. Yep. I will tell you this. My adoptive family, I felt that way when I first like moved to Vegas. Um, I was nervous. I was kind of nervous to tell them because Vegas is mm-hmm. a scary place, and I also didn't want them to be scared for me. Mm-hmm. But I think um, talking with you a lot too, and that you're LDS, and we're pretty open and honest people. It helped me to feel like you know what, I can talk to them about it, and if they don't that's like good. it, that's fine. <clears throat> but they've never once made me feel like, okay, get out. Never once. But That's I think awesome. there's that fear, and maybe this is what you're going through, a Happiest Northwest, <clears throat> may suck because maybe they're, they, I hope that those LDS family wouldn't be like that to you, but it is scary to have that judgment and be like, are they going to 
distance themselves from me because of my true thoughts and feelings and mm-hmm. they're not gonna like but me i feel like being open and, and communicating and having that talk with them is good for both sides because they also if they're going to claim that they're a true christian and that they're going to be accepting of other people they need to learn how to let people share their side and mm-hmm. share their beliefs and still be okay with that because yeah. that's what they're trying to do and share theirs with everybody and else that goes so. both ways you know um I've, I've found people that aren't religious that are you know judgmental so as long as Mm -hmm. it's everyone just if we could not be judgmental exactly the world would be a better place (laughs) Mm -hmm. and i think that having that conversation can help that because the more that they are around people that'll share beliefs that are different from them and they have to learn to agree to disagree and still get along then that's going to help them build that habit and help them to get along better and just be able to handle that i guess but um, and what is what what are you guys saying? I feel like I'm missing out on this conversation. I can confirm and I can confirm and deny all knowledge of that, Denise. Says. Of what though? Oh, the pineapple thing? <laughs> <laughs> this is not a Patreon. I think you are confused. <laughs> Just kidding, Denise. I love Denise. Okay, Cutthroat says people will put pictures of upside down pineapples on their doors on cruises. Whoa. So they they go to the extent of packing a picture. <laughs> they get a nice good one and then they put it Oh my gosh, that's funny. This is a world I have never heard of. <laughs> but you know what's funny? When I first left I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's so weird that people do all these things." And then I found out a lot of order men were, were doing them. <laughs> we just uh, didn't know. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I was pretty oblivious in the order mm. for sure. Well, I uh, the drug but, thing. But too. I always go back to we were so young, like yeah. flip. We no, didn't but there know. were kids that were oh, younger than me, apparently going out to parties, and there was drugs at those parties, and oh, I wow. never even like saw a drug in my life till I till I left. Yeah, well, same. Till I left, I'm trying. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Like, um, I guess in a public school, when I was in public school, there was apparently um, drug a back? kid, a kid with oh. weed. And can I say that? Am I gonna get? Well, I think if you say that one, it's fine. Okay. There was a kid with common. weed in the back, which is illegal in Utah. And I didn't know what it was. And he was laughing and saying it was grass or something like that. I don't know. And oh. I was like, oh, he's just playing with grass. Moved him. <laughs> Packing it in his backpack. Yeah. I didn't know. How am I supposed to know? We have comfrey so in our backpacks. <laughs> but there's a tomato. I go to Vegas and something similar happened with weed. And I was like, that memory from seventh grade, I was like, that was weed. That's what it was. <laughs> so I may Dang. have been around it and just didn't know. That's true, actually. Yeah, I bet a lot of things, we probably even saw it right in front of us and just didn't realize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely think so. And then there were some kids that were definitely more experienced in there. I don't know how they got to be more experienced, but they did. Amanda and Eskel, what do you estimate the current number of order members to be? I think I just saw someone say 10K members, right? Sloan says she well, said 10K members recently. We've roughly been estimating at 10,000 for a while now. Well, because we take the kids from the Seven Brothers, and that's over a few... I want to say one, two thousand, mm-hmm. maybe just one. If you look at Paul's, it's like someone said almost five hundred recently. One of Paul's kids said that. Whoa. Paul's own kid was like, I'm, I would say closer to five hundred. So you take that, and mm-hmm. then you take the rest of the seven brothers. There's got to be. I would say ten thousand, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it is very close to ten thousand, but I don't know. I kind of wonder, because I want to believe that it's decreasing you know because no one's joining first of all and a lot of people are leaving not like a ton but you know every year there's different people that leave and so it's like yeah. other than the fact that they are popping out babies a lot but i don't know yeah they definitely have a lot but of kids you know there's still old people in it people well if that... you watch my um tom green video the, that long hour long of his talk just listen to the kids just listen that's true that. it always sounds like there's like a million people in that room they're all babies <laughs> all of them are babies <laughs> it's just a it's daycare so loud yeah oh, man. i'm sorry to hear that happiest northwest she said thanks amanda and eskel they have already distanced themselves it's kind of sad because we have kids that's the hard part uh, is they like some of them will cut you off in the lds community and i i'm not you can't speak for all of them because there's some really good ones that would not do that but then there's some that will be like well sorry you're not going to heaven with us, so we just better get used to not having you in our life because we're not going to have you in the afterlife, which is so That's sad. So sad. Uh, and I'm sorry you're going through that, and I can tell you I know exactly how that feels. And I I would give advice on that, but it's like, it still hurts. Yeah, and it's different for every individual. It's yeah. like some people are just going to be like that. And it's really yeah. And, like, what the only advice do? I have is from my own experience, and I well, still and about it. Well, and you can always, like, to me, I like to think of that, 
song like kill him with kindness or whatever because like all you can do is still do your best and yeah. if they are gonna you cannot control how people will react or what yeah. they're gonna do but so long as you always st- stay positive and just make the most of it and you do what you can then yeah. what more can you do i always hated that they would be like oh man is leaving the order she's just dwelling like move on with your life go live down that was my life that was my whole world and then overnight i'm just supposed to move on and get over it and this is a part Mm -hmm. of me moving on you know that like this is a part of the process and that was Mm -hmm. amanda in the order was amanda and i can talk about that i'm allowed to Oh, and yeah. I think that's a, a form of them trying to silence us even while we're on the outside. And oh, for yeah. A while, no, they want to silence us so bad, yeah. you guys. Sadly, it works on a lot of people that leave the Not way. on us, though. No <laughs> way. It just fuels the fire. It really does. So keep <laughs> telling us. <laughs> that's funny. But... Sorry, I feel like I should give Eskel some time for his life. So maybe I'll read a few more comments and then we'll go to your life. Yeah. Sounds good, but feel free, like, it's no rush. Mine's pretty, like, I only have plans for, like, 25 minutes on mine, so. I'm sure we'll come up with more stuff, but it shouldn't be very long at all. <clears throat> Joshua How long Kingston? have we been going on this Joshua one? Kingston says, anything more about Jason we should know, or is the keg tapped out already? <laughs> is this? This isn't the Joshua Kingston I'm thinking of, is it? Um, there actually is more stuff about him, but mm. I feel like I've talked about it all, and there's certain things that, Yeah. I mean, we could keep talking, but I kind of don't really want to keep talking yeah. about it. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm yeah, i done talking about him, but do all stuff. Do all 10K fit in the meeting hall church? No. No, mm-hmm. they split it into three different. Well, it's the same building, but they, you know, they have an early morning session. They have a um, midday session and then like an evening session or something and like that. And they have a Idaho group yeah but the idaho one's tiny it's it was bigger. like it's bigger now 20 people in that one we went there when the the church building was really small but from mm-hmm. what i'm hearing from people in idaho it's a lot bigger than it was but hmm. and i hear they're streaming the services too there oh maybe they are trying to do one in um pennsylvania, pennsylvania but that's only two families so it's like why are they trying to there. so bad well it's something about they want to join the amish or bring amish from there no uh, there's a lot i of just amish heard that there. they bought land out there something about um, How much you want to bet? It's because there's area. there's probably a lot of land in the middle of nowhere Amish country. They're by to be, Amish people are trying to get and closer. And maybe get the women. They need more women. Whoa. Wait, wait. They're getting hmm. married younger and younger. Like it's rare to find an 18 year old woman single in the order. Interesting. Dang. That would be a smart tactic if you're trying to get more women. Yeah, but with the, how would that work? You're gonna go up to the Amish people and try and convert them? I, guess. They I don't, don't know, have but they somehow the they somehow know people in the Bluffdale AUB group. They know FLDS. They went down there to go try to help them when the oh, flood happened. Oh, that's true. Actually, and I feel yeah. like they they sucked it all dry. <laughs> so now they're going over there. That's Aww. my opinion. That is just my opinion. Maybe, but yeah. they took Tom Green's hmm. wives. They they tried to dabble. It, they tried to dabble in every set, sticking their fingers. Everywhere. Well, they're desperate for women. Like hmm. they are. Because first of all, I like even statistically, they're only gonna have fifty fifty. You know, fifty percent boys, fifty percent girls. And, and it's like I think in the order, it's more likely that like I feel like there's more guys than girls in the order. So it's like they are running out of girls, and they're making the age younger and younger because they need <gasps> all these older people to marry these girls. And it's like it's getting like dangerous. Basically, yeah. Jacob is here. Jacob Swanson is here in the oh, chat. We have Jason's son in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> What's up, Jacob? You should have yeah. been here, man. Yeah. Oh, I wish somebody could have got you here. He says that I need to rewatch all this because I was looking forward to this one. Oh, oh I would ask you if you wanted to add anything, but if you haven't watched it, you don't know what's already been said. I mean, we said that your we dad said likes... We said a lot of stuff, yeah. man. <laughs> your dad likes toys, He-Man, he has Rolexes, he's very paranoid. We basically, All a lot of the characteristics of he has, he checks a lot of boxes on the, the um, traits that narcissists mm-hmm. have. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you'd like to add anything, and I have said multiple times, we will be linking Jacob's story down below for anyone who wants to hear more from a mm-hmm. child of him perspective. And I'm hoping to still do uh, future videos with him, you know? He's, he's still here in Utah. We with might Jacob, as well get yeah. together, yeah. Make and you know what would be cool to do a video with Jacob about where he's at right now because I yeah feel like he's his transition so much. of leaving and where he's become that's that would be really cool. Yeah. Start start making notes, Jacob. Let's do a video. <laughs> I'm really proud of him. I'm I I wish that 
I knew and had more of a structure when I first left, other than mm. I'm going to get well, married and have babies. <laughs> that was all I was thinking about. <laughs> but to be fair, they really drilled <clears throat> it into the girls' brains. Oh, yeah. Big time. I'm sure with the guys, too, but I feel like it's more with the girls. That that is your only pur- purpose. Holly says, Amish are Christians and wouldn't, upon penalty of death, be polygamous. I live very close to the large Amish group in the nation. I hope Whoa. that's true. I mean, it probably is true. Sorry. What I was meaning to say is I hope there's no, like, members that leave and think that this other cult sounds... Not saying Amish is a cult. Sorry, that sounds bad. Amish is similar, though, to some of the things... Is it the Amish the ones that can't use, like, technology and stuff? Yeah. That seems it's very debatable. Much like a cult. It's debatable if <laughs> but... it's a cult or not. Well... If well, gonna... technically, every religion is debatable, yeah. so... Yeah, but I feel like people but... get offended when you use the word cult. But if you look hmm. up the definition of a cult, pretty much every religion is a cult. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, if you... Like, the definition isn't that harsh. Like, I don't think it's that harsh to call a religion a cult, but... Yeah. It just shows that they are abnormal but and a little bit weird. But there is a thing where it's, like, cult <laughs> hopping when you leave one and then you... Like, that's no, I why bet that's way common yeah. because just like that, if it you're is. so focused we have people on just like that, exactly. from Tom Green, yeah. from the LeBaron group, they cult mm-hmm. hop, they come from this one exactly. to this one. So, I'm scared that they would go to this area where there's Amish people, and maybe there's some ex members who think that the order seems like such a great community, kind of like the Amish culture, and then they join, sure, yeah. and then the women don't realize what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. I but honestly, hope man, if they're gonna join any cult, I feel like the order is gonna be the last cult, man. It's like. <sighs> I'm s- I I mean it makes sense that there's been one family in like the past 5 years that's joined the order because it's just you I don't feel like anyone it's very would want to do that. Pleasing. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Would definitely like to see how you are doing Jacob. Oh, everybody loves you Jacob. Does that make Heck you feel yeah. good? <laughs> they love you. Uh Gerald's here too. Val's here. What's up Val? Oh, we had some juice shots with Gerald. <gasps> Val, oh, I was supposed to do a shot with you, too. Look at We got this ginger shot. He likes ginger a lot. Uh, has he? This one is, yeah, I don't think you like this one. This one is so strong. Mm-hmm. But we still got, because last time I was talking with Val, I was like, um, what what are some ideas we could do if I had you on, on a video on my channel? And he was like, just so we can make the title look cool and be like, um, Let's t- we're going to take shots and all this though, like make it look all fun and stuff. Then he wanted to take a, like juice a bunch of stuff and then we take a bunch of shots of them. <laughs> well, that <laughs> would be, be kind of fun. I wonder how your stomach would feel afterwards. Oh, it would definitely hurt. But... Or other things. <laughs> okay. There's no way it would hurt as bad as my spicy challenge though, man. Oh, yeah. You're invincible I wanted after that one. to die. <laughs> that one is so crazy. Beach Dreamer says there isn't a big draw to join the order unless it's a man who wants to marry a teenager, which is a very yeah, sad Yeah, but that's truth. also going to, the order's going to give them the hardest time though. They won't like, even the let them marry The order wants them, yeah. women to join, but not really for guys to join. I think, so yeah, because like... we, we talked about Tom Green's. Like, he had boys and girls, daughters and sons mm-hmm. joining, and all the girls got married, but none of the boys, right? Except for the one that, like, left with, they had to leave to be together. Mm-hmm. But I think they may entice some men to be like, oh, look at these women, and then get them to work for what, them. What, though? All these married pregnant women? <laughs> How do you entice them? It's like... I did have something to say on oh, that with, with what Beach Dreamer said, um, older men marrying young kids. Did you hear about Paul's son, who was married, but caught talking to a underage girl that ended up being an investigator or something that caught him and he has a charge now what? yeah it was one of paul's kids and he Whoa. was already married and had a kid and he was like talking to a girl online thinking it was an underage teenager Whoa. and he was an adult and then now it's on his record good thing he got caught but it's like these <laughs> men have no bounds <laughs> like it's crazy. oh it's really sad not all of them are like that obviously but but it's like, it's an environment that breeds that, though. Yeah. It's so crazy. And so- sometimes when I meet order boys that are so die hard for the order, and then um, I just don't trust them. <laughs> I just can't trust You just can't mm-hmm. trust them as far as you can throw them. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are kind of small. You can throw them pretty far, actually. Because <laughs> they didn't get fed very well. That was a joke. Anyway, okay. <laughs> okay, we're yeah. done. My sister lives in Delaware near Amish. Well, I didn't know Delaware was over there. 
Okay, sorry, I'm trying to close this out, but I'm sad to close it out because we just got Jacob and Val here. But we're going over to Eskel's channel. And I mean, if you want to yeah. if you want to talk about your dad over, over there too, Jacob, you're welcome to. You're welcome to talk Definitely, about whatever. Definitely, yeah. <clears throat> but uh don't be going nowhere no you guys <laughs> yeah I'll, i will also be putting um jacob's story and stuff in the links down below as eskel's getting ready for his live to go live Sweet. so thank you guys so much for joining this was really fun sorry i got off topic a lot <laughs> but i really appreciated no this was fun here. i have laughed so hard in this one that mm -hmm. literally my cheekbones started to hurt <laughs> yeah i'm sorry if we were kind of annoying <laughs> I kind of forgot the camera was on for a little bit, but it's okay. Anyways, if you want some more of this, go on over to Esco's channel. He's got um, his evening tea, number 30. Number 40. 40. We're finally 40. to the big 4 -0. So nice. give us like five to ten minutes. We'll get everything set up over there, and then join us there. It'll be fun. Okay. Thank you, guys. Right. Love you guys. Bye.